Welcome back to another episode of turning photographers into videographers. If you're new here, one of the biggest things I see in the creative space is photographers who really struggle with video but are interested in it. So I thought, how can I teach this in a simple way? Well, that's what we're here to do because I am a hybrid creator. I do both. So we talked about all the settings in the last one when it came to shutter speed, aperture, ISO, you know, the big three. And now today we're talking about white balance. If you don't know anything about white balance, it pretty much is the coloration of the elements that are around you and how your camera can combat how it's going on. Now the scientific term, not sure what it actually is, but it warms up your image, it cools down your image, and if you mess it up in video, you're in trouble. Photos forgiving, video is not. So I am gonna keep this one quick because it is very similar to photo, but the one thing is, as I mentioned, it's not as forgiving. In a raw photo, you're going to be able to bring those colors back to where they actually needed to be and get it to a good point where you can't even tell the white balance was wrong. If I was outside and I had my white balance at 2500, it's going to be way too cold and I am not gonna be able to bring those skin tones or any of the colors back to make them look natural how I want them to look. So that is another thing and I mentioned it last video because the big thing about video, especially whenever you're starting out, is it's just not as forgiving. You need to have your settings dialed in and ready to go. So sunlight is 5500 Kelvin. That is the one that you need to remember. So that means the white balance of your camera whenever you're outside during direct sunlight is probably going to be around 5500. And a lot of people might hate on me for this, but an easy way to start, and I did this for my first couple of years, definitely got out of it now, but start doing auto white balance. See how your camera reacts and just let the tech do the work for a little bit while you get your other settings dialed in. You don't need to be worrying about 45 different things whenever you get on set. If there is an auto white balance on your camera, I think it's a good thing to use whenever you're starting. So when should you really use manual white balance? Well, there's one time where I think 100% you should use it. And a second time that maybe it would just be good practice to start using. So first thing, whenever it is necessary to use it is whenever you're using multiple cameras. This will just make everything easier whenever it comes to editing. If you have both cameras on auto white balance and one camera is coming from over here, the other one's coming from back there. Well, this one might see a lot more natural light on my face and this one might see the artificial light on my face one's gonna be colder than the other, and then balancing those colors is going to be the biggest pain in the butt. So you can just save yourself by matching those white balances beforehand. Take your time, make sure the picture looks good on screen, and if anything, you don't dial in the exact numbers together, put them both on the cloudy setting or the daylight setting, whichever one looks the most natural, put both cameras on that and it'll just save you a whole lot of time. And then number two, the second reason why you might want to maybe start practicing with this or you might want to set both as manual or set your only camera as manual is if you're in a controlled environment. So for example, right now, I have a light hitting the side of my face right here. I know that my white balance for the subject is not going to change. So I set it, I dialed it all in, and then it's ready to go. If you're using lighting, if you're in a scenario where it's not gonna be changing, maybe in a warehouse, something like that, play around with it. Use manual white balance and get your practice in whenever it's the easier times to do it and not whenever you're walking around, there's LED lights and then you're in natural light and then there's just this terrible light whenever you're in like a disgusting room at an event. Try figuring out what works best in what situations and it's just gonna help you at the end of the day. So that's it for white balance. I know this might be just kind of reiterating what you already knew from photo, but that's why I kept this one pretty easy and simple. So next video, we're gonna be talking about log versus not log. Why would you wanna know this? Well, it's gonna help you in the editing room. And when it comes to the editing room, there's a lot of things that you can do to make your life a whole lot easier. A lot of things that you can just know dialed in on site, so then you don't have to do that much work. And when should you use log? When should you not use it? What should you be worried about when using it? 
and how can you actually make the initial steps to make the colors start to look better in your videos. That's what we're talking about in the next video. See you soon.